JJ Jinx. Truck stop. Amazon Prime Day has come and gone, and I bought this survival kit by Puhi Bao? Puhi Bua. Puhi. I bought this survival kit. <laughs> um, it wasn't severely discounted, just by a couple of bucks, but I've been wanting to check one of these out. This is one of those like $20 to $30 range kits that. Um, look really cool in the pictures so let's check it out it comes in a nice velvety bag here's what is in it well first thing i found is this little first aid kit in a pouch and we have a pamphlet puhi bois 35 pcs survival kit i guess they couldn't fit the word pieces without obscuring that rock even though the photo does Oh, there's something else in the bag. A mystery nylon pouch. <laughs> Let's get this out of there. Yeah, this looks like uh, the cheap plastic box that I've gotten a few things in over the past year or so. Complete with the blank uh, rectangle. I want to start with this nylon pouch. I'm very curious about it. There is a... Oh, it's a knife. How about that? Ah, uh, it's a tactical knife, and here's why. It's got the glass breaker, the seat belt cutter, that probably doesn't work. It's got a high riding pocket clip with a very, very narrow gap at the end. That might be really difficult to get into your pocket. It's open assisted. Little itty bitty serrations down here. Um, it's a drop point blade with a liner lock that goes into a pretty good spot. It's a bit heavy and it feels decent in the hand. Cheap little thing. Ooh. Listen to this. Might be hard to pick up on the audio, but it's probably got some grit in the pivot somewhere. Check out the first aid kit. We've got uh, a bunch of things. Now we've got a bundle of Q-tips, 80 of them, and a resealable plastic bag. A handful of alcohol pads and uh, provodone iodine prep pads. So antiseptic pads, more antiseptic pads, different types of antiseptics, wound pad, Another wound pad, and a strip of standard sized band-aids. A little baggie of medical tape, a little bit of it. And one of those thermal emergency blankets, the smallest one, 130 by 210 centimeters. I would open it up and see how practical it is to fit under it, but I would never get it back in this pouch again. It's showtime. Well, I guess the only things really missing from this first aid kit would be like maybe some analgesics or um, tweezers, those kinds of things. But eh. here's one nice thing about this first aid kit. I got everything to fit. <laughs> Highly visible bag. It would have been nice if it had some kind of a strap on it or something. Yeah, I'm a fan of strap ons. The survival kit. Got four of these tabs. Okay. In the photo, it kind of looked better than this. It looked like everything had like a slot or something in here, but no, it's just kind of thrown into this thing. There are probably other first aid kits in this kind of style that is the way that I described. A lot of plastic.
I saved you the trouble of watching me struggle through all the plastic, but in case you're interested, this is how much was in there. <laughs> so the first thing I saw off the top was uh, this uh, um, clippable holder thing. So you can put things on this ring and quickly detach it from uh, a belt or a pack or whatever you want to snap it onto. Oh, and it's Velcro. So, that's cool. I could see this being pretty useful. The other thing I saw was this. A length of parachute cord, or some kind of a cord. Uh, it's another one. snap thing with a compass. Um, I don't know. I never really rely on these little cheap compasses. I'd rather have a good one that you pay five, ten dollars for, I guess. Uh, this also has a kind of serrated uh, metal thing for cutting, I guess. And I think that's a whistle right there. So I won't use it because there's a dog in the room, but yeah, I believe that is a whistle you can blow through right there. So it's like a little, uh, I guess it's a bracelet. Um, yeah, one of those things. Next up, uh, there was this spork. It's metal, and it's got a plastic handle with a whistle in it. <laughs> oh, check that out. It kind of looks like a, an Olmex face, or maybe some kind of a weird... Um, uh, it reminds me of like a face from like a totem pole. You know what I mean? Hmm. And in that same bag came a little length of shoe string that you can, I guess, tie onto this somewhere. You're not going to fit it through that hole. I guess you're supposed to tie it here. Hmm. Here's the other piece that was in there. It is a massive ferro rod. And wrapped around it is a striker. Um, actually, there's a, there's a few things going on here. It looks like a bottle opener, a ruler... Um, does that say five kilometers? Oh, is this a range finder? One in 100,000? Hmm. Well, this looks like a proper ruler. Uh, in millimeters, or I guess the major marks are centimeters. That's cool. It's metric. <laughs> so I guess the ridgy thing is for the ferro rod, I'm guessing. Check this out. There was also a tactical pen. Uh, it's got a very sharp point, so that's what makes it a tactical pen. It's a glass breaker. Um, you got a deep ride pocket clip. It's one of those things where you, uh, yep, you twist and the writing element comes out. And that's all it does. It looks like something that you can like unscrew and break apart and there's other tools inside, but Nah, it's just a pen that's made to look like it does more than what it actually does. Let's check out the flashlight. Ooh, this looks very much like something James Bond would use. Um, you got some knurling here. Ooh, there's like no feel through it though. It's very shallow knurling, I suppose. Uh, this knurling is interrupted with this little space, which I'm guessing that's, again, one of those marketing uh, put your company logo on it sort of deals. It's got a pocket clip. Very visible orange button for turning it on and off. Hmm. Trying to get to the battery. Oh. <laughs> That's a fun sound. And these fins right here are like sharp. They're not very comfortable on my fingers. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure the instructions talk about how to get to the battery, but I haven't figured it out. Just kidding. Oh, there is no battery. <laughs> well, I don't have a AA battery nearby. Fuck it, I'll get one. And I'm back. Hmm. Doesn't say which way to put it, but I'm assuming it'll go this way. Yeah, I don't really like it when people open these things and they're like, oh, this is awesome. I don't know if it works. I don't have a battery. 
So I always try to power it up and show it off when I can. Ready? Okay, the battery is probably in backwards. Yes, there we go. I'm assuming this uh, telescoping piece focuses it. Yes. That's a cool feature, I think, because, I mean, obviously you can focus it on something uh, kind of like a spotlight, or if you're just walking around in the dark, which why you, you probably shouldn't do, then you can kind of make it more diffuse. Looks like it, it is a single LED with a uh, fisheye lens kind of deal. And there are these uh, fins on the top, these three things. I guess that's the, yeah, you can protect the uh, lens here. If you wanted to, like, put it down like that. I think it would be better if the whole thing were this color orange uh, for all the equipment. And that, for that, for that matter, everything <laughs> would be better with a bright color. But, hey, I didn't... Whoa. That was weird. I didn't put this kit together. Oh, yeah. Check... I'm not doing anything. How did I do that? That's cool. How did I do that? I've just discovered a new feature. So if you push it in all the way to click, it turns it on and off. But there's like a halfway part which modulates between different modes. So you click, you get the full power, half click, and it strobes. That is really useful. Half click again, and it's just a little bit uh, less bright. Um, I don't know if you could tell, but it is. Half click again, and it goes even dimmer. I like that. I'm quite pleased with that one. A few other things. We've got um, one of those hand saw chain things, which um, I've broken a few of these, but I've had a few that didn't break. In general, they are far less efficient than an actual saw. So bring one of those and just use this as an emergency backup. <laughs> and here we have a brass colored whistle. That's the third whistle in this package, except this one's just a whistle. So um, I guess that's a good thing. Whistles are very useful if you need to be found or scare off wildlife or whatever. And here we have a piece that has a little teeny tiny carabiner, uh, something that kind of resembles a key. It could be kind of a canoe paddle, perhaps. It's got a kind of rough pattern on this part. Ugh. This part kind of has a rough pattern. I guess it was like stamped out, but not with a very smooth stamping mechanism. But no matter, on the other side is the business end, a flathead screwdriver. And that's it. <laughs> one more item. I found one of these uh, fake leather pouch thingies, and based on the impressions, it looks like one of those card tools. Uh, it, it's actually a little bit smaller than the ones I usually have. Uh, you got a ruler, protractor, cap lifter, can opener, a bunch of things. There's a card in it. Oh, it just tells you what's on it. Cool. Now let's go back to the pamphlet, see what it has to say. The first panel shows, um, this is an upgrade survival knife. An upgrade? I don't, I'm not sure what that means. I guess, I never really thought about it, but you could use the seatbelt cutter as a bottle opener too, couldn't you? I got some kind of a, what is that? For the seatbelt cutter demonstration? Is that a rubber band? Multi-use spork. That's not what I got. Or maybe that is what I got. Does that? Oh, it does. <laughs> Maybe I should read instructions more often. Fishing, it's got whistle, sawtooth, knife, bottle opener, spoon. I like that. Ah, okay. So it's the paracord bracelet that has the fire starter. Wait, it didn't have that though. It had the scrapey thing, did I miss that? That is a fire starter, I didn't even notice that. Check that out. <laughs> huh. Oh, that's a little awkward, though. I guess if you were to tear the paracord apart to use it and then have these two separate pieces, it might be a little easier. I like that. Hidden features. And the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. Flintstone and scraper, wire saw, flashlight. The emergency blanket came in the first aid kit, though. A tactical pen with a attack defense head. Diamonds? The diamonds are here! Oh! That's what that is, a molly bottle clip. Yeah, yeah. 
a water bottle clip for your molly gear. Some people say that the box is difficult to open, so it can be used to open the box and be a straight screwdriver. She's either in pain or having a really good day. And there we have it, folks, the Puhi Bois 35 with a nice bag. I cannot get this thing closed. <laughs> Showtime.